If you follow my channel, you know I am into watches. It's a weird little love that I have, but I'm gonna try to look at this story through the eyes of someone who isn't into watches. Or me, about six years ago, when I couldn't name a watch brand other than Rolex, and if you said Big Bang, I'd assume you were talking about my Saturday night. I mean, science. I want to look at this as someone who isn't heavily invested in watches because I think there's a story here that has mass appeal beyond just the watch collecting community. You may or may not know this, but there is this secret, weird, lucrative world of used luxury watches. There are certain watches that are trading thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars above their retail price. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. But in the past couple months, we've seen these prices plummet. Recognizable brands like Rolex, Patek Philippe have had a bit of a bubble burst. And as we see the economy recess, we've seen similar things happen in the world of luxury watches. So how did this happen? Who are the people getting rich off of selling their watches? And why are watches on the decline? What is going on with luxury watches? The watch market has officially tanked. All of a sudden, there just weren't buyers. People were willing to sell, but there weren't buyers coming forth to buy the stocks. Okay, guys, look at these prices. These prices are fucking ridiculous. So this is the Patek Philippe Nautilus, and I love this watch. There is nothing really special about this watch. It is a three-hand stainless steel sports watch with a date. It's a mechanical watch, so it isn't powered by a quartz battery. A decent amount of craftsmanship went into this. It has a decorated movement, and it has some strong brand recognition being a Patek Philippe. But there is absolutely nothing special about this watch. I guess it wears nice. Its design language is super 1970s. But this is not a 100,000 pound watch. Or guys, look at this one. 500,000 pound for a 40th anniversary Nautilus. That is worth more than my house, where I live. It's, it's not just, you know, a piece of jewelry that sits on my wrist and tells me the time. These watches are not worth this price tag. At best, these are worth about 30,000 pound. And even that's a stretch. And here's the crazy part. There's going to be someone that bought this watch new from Patek Philippe for 30,000 pound. And they are now reselling it on for 100,000 pound, making them a tidy 70,000 pound profit in the meantime. So how does this 30,000 pound watch resell for 100,000 pound? To answer that, we need to hit rewind and look into how you actually buy a watch in the first place. So this is my collection of watches that cost too much. <laughs> so far, it's growing. So if you aren't already heavily invested in this luxury watch world, you might be surprised at how this whole thing works. So say you wanted one of those Patek Philippe Nautiluses. Nautiluses, not a lie. <laughs> you want a Nautilus. They seem super valuable. Let's go to the Patek store and buy one. Yeah, good luck with that. Or maybe you've always wanted a Rolex. It's a watch that's super aspirational for you. You finally saved the money and you're going to do it. You're going to buy your first Rolex. Yeah, no you're not. <laughs> so let's stick with Rolex. So right now to buy a Rolex is a years long waiting list. Sometimes it's a decades long waiting list. When you walk into the shop, you'll see windows filled with watches, but none of them are for sale. They are exhibition only. Even if they were for sale, they have hundreds of names already on the list of people waiting to buy that watch. So if you're a newcomer who doesn't have any luxury watches trying to buy one, good luck with that. Best you can do is register your interest and try to charm over the shop assistant into liking you enough to put your name up that list. 
And with some of these watches as a newbie in 2022, you aren't even eligible to buy these watches. The GMT Master 2 BLRO or the Pepsi, forget about it. Rolex Daytona, not gonna happen. With enough years of purchasing and showing up to your AD, you might finally get there, but it takes a while. Now I'm not gonna get into any conspiracies here, but authorized dealers definitely prioritize loyal customers who have a history of not flipping. If you're sitting there thinking, what's flipping? What's a flipper? Here's a quick definition of what a watch flipper is. It's someone who buys a watch with the purpose of reselling it on for a profit. Flippers are the arch nemesis to watch collectors. But hey, like I'm one of the rare collectors who gets it. Like, I get it, I get why they do it. If you had tens of thousands of dollars or pounds of profit sat there on your wrist, it'd be tempting to sell it. I would never do it, goldsmiths. I would never do it. But I think as humans, we could, we could understand. So there's this massive supply and demand problem in the luxury watch market. Demand is high, supply is low, causing the secondary prices of certain watch brands to skyrocket. And it only ballooned further with the pandemic and government stimulus packages. People had more money to spend and nowhere to go. Plans around the world from halting air travel to scaling back festive celebrations. All this as new infections in the U.S. have spiked 55% in the last two weeks alone, largely due to the highly contagious... Vacations were canceled. People weren't able to eat out. All those usual vices we have and we put a lot of our money towards were gone. And people, people like me, had more money in their bank accounts than ever before. So what did they do with this money? They saved it in a secure lifetime ISA, of course. No, of course they didn't. They went out and bought stuff. And if you're me, they bought watches. So this was one of the problems with the government stimulating the economy. When people have more money, they go out and buy more stuff, which is good, right? Kind of yes and kind of no at the same time. It is short-sighted thinking. There's these repetitive patterns of human behavior that we see expressed through the economy time and time again. At the end of an economic peak comes a sharp and sudden trough. What we are seeing with the secondary watch market is the bursting of a speculative asset bubble. The first thing to know about the luxury watch market is that it is small, concentrated, and the value of wristwatches are largely subjective, which theoretically makes it a market ripe for exploitation, corruption, and it makes it quite a volatile market. These watches trading tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars over retail, aren't worth what they're selling for. The manufacturer doesn't even think they're worth that. They are only worth what the last sucker has paid for them. And there is no guarantee on what the next person will pay for them. Certain coveted watch models became a speculative asset. I'm talking about your Rolex Submariners, Blue Dial Sky Dwellers, Daytonas, Patek Philippe Nautilus, and Aquanauts. But those prices have been coming crashing back down to earth. Leading us to the big question, the million dollar question. Is this a crash or a correction? The popular thing to say is that we are witnessing a correction. As of the date of filming, I would agree we have seen a correction. If you look at watch prices over time for popular models, you will see that following the spike isn't a doom and gloom price. It is still far and away over retail and still worth far more than the 2% inflation central banks often shoot for. As of the day of filming, I would say we've seen a correction. But my caution would be, we're only at the beginning of this new recession. According to Michael Burry, the man who predicted the 2008 housing market crisis, we are heading into a far worse recession. Disclaimer, I'm a massive Michael Burry fangirl, so I think this bias should be known going forward. <laughs> But in 2021, he made some very bold claims. Back in February 2021, he predicted skyrocketing inflation in 2022, which we're now living in. He further warned investors that the biggest crash of all time was heading our way. 
The collapse of Bitcoin, coupled with the drop in people's personal savings from mishandling finances during the COVID-19 pandemic, in Burry's opinion, will be the main driving factors of economic turmoil. So that's the bad news. Shit is gonna get worse. In my opinion, in Burry's opinion, we don't have a crystal ball. We, we don't know. We don't know the future. No one does. But as I spend and save my money, as I'm thinking about the future, I'm preparing for a future that's far worse than what we're in now, at least for the next couple years. But the good news is, if you own some of these watches that have, you know, skyrocketed and come back down to earth, if you own these and you love these, but you also see them as an investment, coveted watches secondary market value traditionally holds out all right. It won't be the top of the bubble like it was, but those specific coveted watches will still trade above retail. Finding the right buyer might be more of the trick in a bear market and people aren't spending as much money. <laughs> And that is just traditionally. That doesn't mean that's what's going to happen this time around. Everything could go tits up, the bubble could completely burst, and I would be very happy because I could finally get an AP Royal Oak below retail. Come on. We just truly don't know. Top economists don't know. The gray market dealers you watch on YouTube, they don't know. <laughs> And this is why watches are an extremely risky investment and an investment I would never encourage someone to make. Buy the watches because you love them. Buy the watches you love because you love them. The market is never guaranteed. I'm not planning to sell any of mine, so I'm not too worried. And I, I don't store most of my wealth in watches, which I would also never recommend. We're only at the beginning of a recession that I think is going to be absolutely devastating. Spend your money frugally is what I will say. Anyways, <laughs> that's all for today. Sorry is a little bit more doom and gloom than usual. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. You know, my words, not gospel. I always love to hear your thoughts. Let us know in those comments and to cheer you up. Here is some footage of the goodest boy ever, Teddy. Let his cuteness bring you joy. Teddy, so cute. I'm so sorry everyone to have such a sad